welcome back to Money Matters. I'm Emily Johnson, and I'm joined as always by David Kroll, and we have been discussing the markets uh, leading up to the exciting presidential election. I love this is actually the second presidential election we've been able to do this for, I think, it which has. is very cool. It has. Um, so it's been it's been very interesting. We talked about the equity markets, and we were just about to lead into interest rates and the bond markets, and what what we're seeing there as we're approaching this this big day next Tuesday. The, it is interesting, and it sort of dovetails to um, to what I was talking about just before we broke. The it seems the bond markets, at least, seem to have made a decision. Uh, the bond markets have decided that we really do have an economy that is reasonably strong, has legs, and is likely to get stronger. The bond market seems to have made that decision from a whole variety of reasons, a whole variety of data. We've got, you know, going on 40 months of continuous improvement in the, uh, in the employment mm -hmm. numbers. We've got, uh, we've got a reasonable stability in our uh, uh, our uh, income numbers at this point, the income numbers are starting to sneak up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look as if in unemployment can really fall much more because we're running into shortages in the labor market right. for the first time. In fact, isn't Christmas, it's I'm not to interrupt you, but Christmas yeah. hiring is starting early from what I'm reading that mm -hmm. uh, because of the, the concern that there is going to be more difficulty hiring. More difficulty hiring. It's amazing. Hiring. What, a, what a 180 from last year. And so the core unemployment rate is maybe not where we are 4.9% right now, but it's darn close to it. I mean, core unemployment. What you're going to see now is from either party uh, and from either, uh, 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 from either candidate, you're going to see policy decisions that genuinely try to pr improve the quality of jobs because that's really the only direction. That's where the corporations are coming. There's a shortage of qualified workers. Uh, uh, the, the bond market, how does the bond market say, hey, we think the economy is on a pretty even keel? It expresses that by raising interest rates. Uh, the 10-year uh, Treasury is trading at 1.82 yesterday. Uh, that's uh, 20 basis points, 25 basis points up from a low uh, of only three or four months ago mm -hmm. when we hit 1.35, 1.4, 1.45. Mm -hmm. And it's still a big jump, though. That's a big jump. It's 50 percent or so. It's it's uh, and in 30%. my my world, it it uh, it expresses itself not in a big hike in interest rates, but a noticeable one. 30-year fixed rate mortgages dipped down into the 3.375 range and are now at 3.5, 3.625, about a quarter of a percent difference. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, certainly, by the way, uh, any of you who are out there and who have postponed calling about uh, refinancing your mortgage, absolutely. And who don't have a tree through your house. <laughs> yeah. so. And you, and you <laughs> don't have a tree through your house. This is absolutely the time to do it. But the bond markets uh, uh, absolutely uh, are showing um, an indication that the economy is, is, is strengthening. So to what extent, and again, I'm, I'm interrupting, mm -hmm. so you That's can fine. just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. tell me to be quiet, but to what extent is, is the, that jump, the, and it, it's, it's been steady, I guess it hasn't really felt like a big jump, you it know, it's sort of going 1.6, one, one, seven, one, eight mm -hmm. on the 10 year. To what extent is that just, is that uh, tying to the likelihood of the increase that we expect in December, the Fed increasing rates 25 bips in December, and to what extent is that tied to, and again, this is, you know, we're guessing, but um, what extent is that tied to the economy? Cause I, and I guess they all we We think that, uh, or the National Association of um, Mortgage Bankers, they, uh, uh, thinks that, the, that it's tied to the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the anticipated increase from the Fed, which will be a quarter of a percent, uh, in December, most likely, uh, that's sort of baked in at this point. Right. I mean, we, we've already made that adjustment, and and still uh, the bond prices go down, yields go up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit so more. So, if for some reason that they did not, if the Fed did not raise in December, would that send that the you know the ten-year and the bond market just the interest rates crashing down, or would it sit idle? Because on the flip side of that, if they do raise, which is already expected, you would assume that that raises, as you say, it's baked in. So you're mm. not actually going to see, plus you're going to have a, 
a large number of buyers of bonds once those rates go up, so it's going to force if, that real rate back down. If, if the Fed didn't, then that would be because of some adverse uh, news in the economy. If, well, the, if the Fed didn't, it would have to see two months. Uh, there's, two, uh, there's two months of data, one of which we got this morning, which was stable mm -hmm. for uh, uh, employment. That leaves only one more report before mm -hmm. the Fed meets. But it does seem like they're operating on, on different data points as well. I mean, with the 150 PhDs that they have behind the scenes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they, they seem to be taking into account, especially when you read the minutes and there's such discrepancy you know, mm -hmm, among mm -hmm. the voting members. Now, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't appear that, that the interest rate market cares much what the Fed is going to do right now. That, it, it's, it's more the, the long, slow, uh, positive drive in the economy the, the very real expectation that GDP will hit uh, uh, reasonable targets, will hit uh, two and a half, three percent, three and a half percent mm -hmm. growth somewhere in there, that inflation is nearing, it's, it's coming up a little bit and nearing the Fed target. Mm -hmm. um, these are all the basic elements that the, the Fed target, by the way, is two percent and we're still well below inflation. two percent yeah. for, for inflation. Um, so it's it's uh, it's a pretty stable economy. It's not one. It's not an economy that serves everyone in the population, but it's a stable economy. Mm -hmm. So, the the really the really kind of big and long-awaited indicator is income growth and uh, the shift, uh, the slow shift to uh, a job base that that um, that is more productive for the middle class, mm -hmm. and that. That's a long-term project. And it's a long way from reality, because that definition of, of middle class is so in flux right now. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, years mm -hmm. ago we did, a, we did a show that looked at, we should just bring this chart out again. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. pretty similar to what it was mm -hmm. two, three years ago, where we looked at real earnings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what that middle range is. Mm -hmm. It's massive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's so many striations. So you have your, your if you were, again, my imaginary chart that mm -hmm. we have here. Mm -hmm. But there were so many striations in what would be the middle class, it's really difficult to define mm -hmm. you know, what mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. from an earnings perspective and then a, um, then a cost of living perspective, you know, we've always talked about fixed and discretionary costs. I mean, that range is so big and mm -hmm. geographically where you live, where your costs go and mm -hmm. um, education, all that stuff. I mean, it's just that definition is massive. I think there's a lot of people that would be defined as middle class that don't feel Middle the, class. They don't feel middle class. That's right. right. Um, in this part of the world, uh, <clears throat> the the uh, middle class home buyer is anybody with a with a joint income with with two incomes flowing into the family that are somewhere between sixty and a hundred thousand dollars together. Together, and that's a uh, that's a growing group that represents uh, a growing part of the population in Bluffton, in, uh, in Okatee, in Ridgeland, and, and all of the growth areas uh, where you see just thousands and thousands of families mm -hmm. uh, uh, settling. Very, very di different economic model from retirees. Mm -hmm. uh, retirees are, are, I think, completely separate from that model because retirees tend to bring a large amount of equity to the purchase of the property mm -hmm. and try to minimize their, their cash flow needs and interestingly end up at approximately the same household income. The retirees are trying to manage their way backwards into an outgoing uh, uh, need for about 50 or 60 or 70 or $80,000 mm -hmm. a year. It sounds but the way, manageable, yeah. But the way they achieve it is by, by minimizing their costs in very, various directions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, There's not a peace of mind involved in that. That's, that's yeah. correct. <laughs> that's correct. And that's, that's, that's why the, um, uh, uh, in this area you, you have really two groups, two classes of, of uh, uh, it's a double economy. Mm -hmm. It's a double economy. It's a micro of the national economy, plus it's the retirement economy. Mm -hmm. So it's it's quite interesting. It's very interesting. I yeah. agree. Yeah. All right. Yep. Um, we uh, are expecting the election to have some surprises. 
the biggest surprise will not be the presidential side of it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a likely Hillary Clinton victory. But the big surprise will be whether the Senate goes to the Democrats or doesn't go to mm -hmm. the Democrats. That will be a surprise. So we'll be on the edge of our seats. I know all of you will be, and we'll have uh, some fun times next. All right. Looking forward to it. All right, yeah. we'll stick with us next week with more Money Matters. And until then, have a wonderful week.